Thank you, Randy. Once again, we welcome all of you in the mighty and unfailing name of Jesus. Today is a very special day. Why? Why? Because not only here on earth we celebrate, but also the Bible says there is a great party going on on your behalf, Buna, in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't really believe me, let me read this. Hallelujah. You don't make clap over God just in the God. Praise the Lord. Luke 15, 7. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven. There is more rejoicing than on earth over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. Dear children of God, <coughs> baptism is something very special. Right? It's so special and people in the early church, the apostolic church, the early, a very early church, they took baptism so seriously. If somebody commits to take baptism and before they actually come to that day of baptism, if, God forbid, they die, they depart from this earth, you know what they did? You know what they did? They substituted somebody else to stand in for, uh, in baptism for them. That is in the scripture. Right? So that is how serious it is. So the moment you come to the realization that it is an important act for us to follow, then it is good if you don't delay it. There's no point in delaying it. There's no reason to delay it. Let's briefly look into uh, a, a few verses from the Bible that confirms the importance of obeying God in the waters of baptism. Hallelujah. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm happy that you are here. I'm happy that you are here. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to see you next week as well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Dear children of God, baptism, right, comes directly from the Greek word baptismos. The literary meaning of it is immersion or an act of dipping. So the whole being, the whole from head to toe, you are immersed in water. Right? Not sprinkling. If I sprinkle, then only parts of your body gets this sprinkling. Right? Therefore, it is important, according to the Bible, that we are immersed in the water. Baptism, understand this, baptism does not mean the forgiveness of sins. But it symbolizes it. Many use the phrase that baptism is an inward uh, or, or an outward symbol of an inward reality. The reality is that <laughs> that you have realized, right, that you are a sinner, every one of us is a sinner, that we need the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one way for redemption, right? That assurance by believing in Jesus. Jesus said, Jesus was the only person who said any time in history in this world that I am the way, the truth and life. Therefore, if you believe in me, Jesus said, you shall have 
eternal life. Not only that, eternal life, many people's understanding of eternal life is when you close your eyes for good in this world. But eternity begins now. If you are not in eternity now, you will never be in eternity at any time in history. Therefore, eternity starts now. Therefore, Jesus is not only here or came here to take you to heaven, but also to take you through this life on earth. Through this life on earth, dear children of God, we need Him. And I tell you, funny enough, the world needs Him now more than ever before. Because we are living in very dangerous times. You can't go into a supermarket, into a theater, into a cinema, into some uh, pleasure, uh, seeking places. Why? You don't know what is going to happen suddenly. The dangers in this world are so unpredictable so severe, we need Jesus, right? Your safety is not on the security arrangements that the government makes on your behalf or any precautions that you might take to protect yourself, but your safety, my safety is only in Christ. You need to understand the nature of God. Mark 16, 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. We can't really uh, twist and turn this verse to be politically correct in this day and age. Right? It's point blank. Very clear. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Simple as that. Dear children of God, even though the Bible teaches of baptism being a symbol, it also teaches us that it is more than a symbol. Something actually happens when you are baptized. Right? Something actually happens when you are baptized. Why do we need to get baptized? Simple. Jesus commanded us to be baptized. It's a command from the one who has come to show us the way. The one who has come as the truth. The one who has come to give us life. Not just life, but the Bible says, I have come to give you life and life in abundance or life to the full. Right? No one can live a full life in this world unless they have Christ in them. That is what the Bible says. Jesus not only commanded us, but also he showed us by example. There's no need for him to be baptized. But he obeyed in the waters of baptism so that we may follow that example. The children of God, if you think about it, it's not an option for us. Right? It's not an option to take baptism or not. Because Jesus took baptism. There's no two words about it. And also, ever since the first century, the early church, the church's teaching is that we should be baptized. Then the, come the question, right? Who can be baptized? Dear children of God, those who
who have heard the gospel and believe. Those who have repented. You know on that day of Pentecost, when they received the Holy Spirit, Peter got up for the first time and preached. Right? Preached in public. People who listened to him were convicted, were convicted and asked him, Brother, what should we do? Right? Peter just said two things. Repent and be baptized. Simple like that. You don't have to go through a whole lot of rituals. Right? Just repent. That's in your heart. Right? And then be baptized. Is a pub public acknowledgement of your repentance. Your acceptance of Christ. Your decision to walk with Christ into eternity. So what should motivate you? Right? Young people, right, are motivated by every new app that comes up. Is it not? Right? If you want to know what is latest in the market, ask these young people. The older ones would know. Right? So something motivates them to be on the lookout for the new things come up. Right? So should be baptism. All these apps, right? Will be finished after a while. Next week there will be a new app coming in. New gadget. Right? But this is life. This is life, dear children of God. Right? So, what could motivate you? Motives of baptism. Number one, Jesus was baptized. That should be enough. Right? If Jesus uh, thought it was necessary, a man who knew no sin thought it was necessary, then that should motivate us. How much more we need to be baptized? If Jesus was baptized once, we need to be baptized hundred times. Is it not? <laughs> but you don't need to. You know, I, tell, I like to tell you a story. You know, in India, there was <laughs> this Hindu lady who suddenly was brought into this knowledge, this truth. So, without telling her husband, <laughs> she went and took baptism. The husband eventually come to know that. He was furious. He was mad. He got hold of her and she came back and beat her up and said, I don't want you to do this ever again. <laughs> so she said, I will never do this again. <laughs> it's a little God. You are taking baptism once, no matter where you took it, it's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to be re-baptized. <coughs> Dear children of God, it's amazing. It's an amazing experience. To fulfill righteousness, Jesus himself has said in Luke, when he was asked about John's baptism, whether it is from God or whether it is John's own creation. You know, Jesus eventually replied and said, the Pharisees and the scribes and the teachers of law fail to accept John's baptism and earn the wrath of God. Therefore, it is God's righteousness. Baptism is God's righteousness. Thirdly, Jesus 
commands us to be baptized. Right? He told his disciples, go into the world. Go into the world and make disciples unto me, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And also, there's another important thing, the connection with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There are a few verses we could go through, but I just want you uh, to look at this one. Acts two thirty-eight <coughs> is an important one. <coughs> Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see the connection? You see? So it means Peter is connecting the baptism of the Holy Spirit as an inevitable result or occurrence after you have been baptized in the water. However, there are records in the Bible where some people who were very fervent, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit even before they were baptized in the waters of baptism. Right? That is when uh, Paul and Peter, uh, when they went out and they saw people uh, filled in the spirit who were not baptized, they say, we cannot prohibit water from these people who have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see, you see, even there, the importance of baptism is emphasized. Right? The, the, the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit is a great uh, baptism. Nevertheless, nevertheless, even though they have already received it, they were baptized in the water. That shows the significance of water baptism. So we cannot really underestimate the importance of water baptism. And also, it's in of God. Baptism is as symbol of death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, when you are immersed, right? Completely. That is why I emphasize complete immersion that represents your burial, death, and your burial. Right? When you come out, that symbolizes your new life, being born again in the spirit. <coughs> you are once, all of us are once born in our flesh, but when we come out of the waters, that is the point at which we could at least have a date, right? I'm born of the spirit on that day. Right? Why I often say this, when the women conceive, the child is not born, is it? It's conceived, you're happy, you have parties, giving sweets in workplaces and all that in Sri Lanka, right? But no sign of the baby. You can't really uh, say the day you conceive is the date of birth of the child, can you? No. Right? But when the baby comes out, even though the baby was conceived nine months ago, nine months ago? Okay. <laughs> Ten months ago maybe. Okay? <laughs> right? We don't call it, you know, the date of birth. The date of birth is when the child comes out. So, today is your date of birth, Bono. Huh? Being born in the spirit. Right? 
So it's important to be a children of God. A landmark in your life. Right? Because the spirit life, right? The law of the spirit is much more superior to the law of the flesh. The law of the world. Right? You are entering into a new phase whereby a new dawn is open. A new day is dawn. A new life has begun from today. Dear children of God, the greatest of all the benefits of this day is quite boldly. Every one of us can say, and you can say, Puno, from today. There is no more condemnation. There is no more condemnation. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Why the Lord has taken all, all our guilt, all our mistakes, all our errors, all our sins, everything is wiped clean. We have been substituted. You are free. If the Son of Man sets you free, you are free indeed. You are not answerable to anyone because the Lord has removed all your wrongdoings. All your sins. You are clean. You are free. The Lord has paid the price to set you free. Very high price. Right? Salvation is free for us. Only we believe in our heart and confess through our mouth we are saved. But to, for us to receive that, the Lord paid a very high price, the ultimate price. He shed his blood. The moment the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sinless blood, was spilled on the surface of the earth, the destiny of man has changed. Man who is destined to die because of his falling or the nature that man earned for himself, created for himself, the fallen nature, right, is removed. And God has reinstated us to be living eternally. That is baptism. Baptism must be taken so seriously, it must not be taken lightly. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Have you decided to follow Him? Because the command is, go into the world and make disciples unto me. So have you decided that you should become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Just one more question. Just one more question. Have you uh, the assurance deep down in your heart that the Lord has forgiven all your sins because of his shed blood and he has set you free and no more condemnation in him. Yes. And by the confessions that you have made and according to the command given to us we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will see.
at break of dawn The son of hell 